Hey, what's going on, everybody? Two Joe Panda back in action. We're going to be playing some Amorous tonight. It has been a long damn time, and I have to say, I think it's official. I think it's official. We're going to add Amorous to my favorites because, well, at this point, why would I not, right? I would say Amorous as a game has definitely proven its worth um, in how many hours I've poured into it, mostly to. I guess, entertain the masses. Oh boy. Man, that song. Get out of here. Nobody wants you, G-Force. Get out of here. Shoot, shoot. There we go. Alrighty. So, here's what we're going to do. We are going to continue where we picked up from last time. And if I remember correctly, I was dating not only... What was it? It sucks. I keep forgetting their names. I know Sky, Jax. <clears throat> we were dating Jax and Sky at the same time, and we got a little further with Sky than I left on Jax. I think tonight it's time we pick up with Sky. Oh shit. Wait, what the hell? Well, you gotta be shitting me. Alright, well, I'm not complaining, but still, like, I was not expecting to come back here. See, here's the thing. This is like version past point nine two, so I would imagine there'd be some more interesting things going on. At least you can talk to the DJ now. Wait, can I talk to this guy, Ethris? I think that's what his name is. Yeah, this guy looks looking a little too happy. Like I, I'm seeing something right here. He's looking a little too happy to be giving his stuff over to Ethris. And then, like freaking fuckboy McGee over here is just kind of like, yo, I'm not even gonna approach the dance floor. I'm just gonna stand here and stare at you. Well, he's not even staring at me. He's staring, like, slightly past me. Um, awkwardly. And I like these two. Like, they're just, like, bump-bumping the whole night long. Although, is that allowed? Is this guy allowed to have a drink on the dance floor? What if he drops that? What if he's too drunk that he just drops that and, like, shatters? Nobody's wearing shoes, okay? Like, I worry about these things, alright? And I'm very surprised he's not getting yelled at for being, like, piss-ass drunk on the floor. And... Here's something, I know I mentioned this in my review. This guy is freaking just like sitting on a stool. And if you finish talking to him, the stool disappears. Like, it's like the only stool here in this whole bar. So he just like carries the stool around him everywhere he goes. Also, he's like the only person wearing shoes. I, I figured I'd point that out. Let's take a look, actually. Yep, he's pretty much the only person wearing shoes. Unless Jax is, which I highly doubt. All right, well, you know what? I'm not going to waste my time doing that. We're gonna talk to this guy. <clears throat> hey, bro. Can I borrow you for a second? What's up? Uh, can we head home? I think I've just had about all the fun I can have here. Do you mind if we head home? You sure you want to go? I normally go all night, but I'm happy to go whenever you are. You just let me know when you're sure. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, it's late. I wouldn't mind calling it a night. Fair enough. I appreciate you coming tonight. You'll have to tell me about how it went all the way home. It's rowdy in here. It was refreshing to step outside. The bouncer gave us a gentle wave, Sharpie in hand as he dressed the next in line. I felt a little bad for re pressuring Cody to leaving earlier than usually, but he was all smiles. He was just happy that he came, I suppose. He insisted on driving. Drinking apparently put him off his game. After all that excitement, I barely recall what we talked about on the way home. It just flew by. It's funny. Trip to the club felt like a lifetime. I guess I was more nervous than I should have been. Best not to overthink it. We passed out fairly quickly uh, when we got home. So right in the high of the evening. I really hope it didn't screw up with my loads. Ugh, first time I've slept in late for reasons other than being a loafer. Seems like Cody is already up. Either that or he just dropped me off and went back clubbing. The whole thing still feels kind of surreal. I should check my phone to see if I get any contacts. Just one of those weird dreams. Okay, congratulations, you unlocked last night. DJ slayed my life, and something else that I missed. Okay, so I'm getting some doubts here. Oh shit! Okay, sorry about that. I wasted some time. Well, I didn't waste total time. You guys really need to hear my commentary. I promise you this. Yes, I am very sure I want to load that. Alright, sorry about that. You finished the tutorial! Prologue and went home. Okay, thank you for that. Um, let's... Oh wait, why am I loading again? 
Let's step outside. See, like, here's the thing that I don't like. I wish that they just kept the map system that they introduced in the, like, version 2, I think. Let's see. Oh, okay. I don't need to see that. Wish you could just, like, walk around your house or go outside or something like that. That'd be kind of neat. Alright, let's see what my contacts are. Alright, so these are the four contacts I have. And honestly, in real life, I would not be complaining if these were my four contacts. Although, dang mercy would be very interesting. For more reasons than one. And you'll find out why later. Um, so who should we continue? I think I said Sky, so let's do that. Oh, delete contact? I'd never do that. Hey, Renamon. Fox girl seemed nice enough. I may as well see how she's doing. Ring, ring, ring. Ring, ring, ring. Doesn't seem like she's gonna answer. Click. Hey, this is Sky. Sorry, but I'm not here at the moment. Leave me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. How do I stop this now? Oh, here we go. Beep. Hmm. Leave a message. Hey, it's two Joe. We chatted for... Wait, what the fuck? Oh, you gotta be shitting me. I know for a damn fact that we started her dating tree. Oh no! Is this gonna be one of those stupid things where it's like, because I was starting hers, and I jumped to, like, Jax's after that? Oh, I really hope not. Okay. Hey Sky, just missed my call or something? Yeah, it's not real, sorry about that. I was screaming for my phone and I didn't answer in time. Thanks for calling though. No problem. You were a lot of fun to talk to. Okay, I am not doing this again. Uh, let's just do auto skip. Wait. Load. Let's see. Um. Hmm. Something's fucked up here. Okay, I'm really sorry to do this. But something's screwed up with my game. I don't know what it is. Like, I should honestly be able to date whoever and do whatever, but I might have to actually redo all that shit, so... That's not cool. Alright, let's talk to Jax again. Oh my gosh, are you fucking surreal? Okay, it would apparently be that I fucked up with my game, or something happened. Okay, I, I'm like... I am really sorry about this. This is just really throwing me off my game. Dude, I saved! I know I did! You know what? I think I know what I'm gonna do. You know what? Actually, let's go this route. Oh, no. Two tickets for Knights in Shining Amour, please. Jack stifled a surprised laugh as he looked at me in askance. The choice for a first date, if you had muffins more, I guess you had ulterior motives. Despite laughing off the suggestion, I did have a moment of concern. Some part of me did pick the movie to see a more romantic tone between the two of us. Jax insisted on grabbing the popcorn and sodas while I went to grab some seats. The two of us got settled in just as the previews began. As we settled in, I glanced over and Jax... He sagged in his seat and absently began to munch on his popcorn. I felt a nervous tinge as I began to question my choice of movies, and maybe if Jax had been as interested in me as I thought... <clears throat> oh my god, look at that. The movie opened predictably enough. A guy, his friend, and a girl all bumbling throughout their romantic lives. <clears throat> my decision weighed even heavier on me as the girl juggled between dating both of them with predictable results. What I did not expect, between sealing glances at Jackson biting my lip, was when the friend in the middle of the stereotypical fight kissed the guy. Jack suddenly shifted a little in his seat, turning a rather deep shade of purple. The movie continued, the guy and his friend now dating while the girl tried to reconcile the both of them. 
By the end, a tasteful wedding between the guy and his friend, Jax was glancing away from the screen and staring down into his popcorn. When the movie ended, Jax was quiet and reserved again. We got up in silence, a frown forming already as I followed him back into the lobby. Already worried about Jax's reaction to the movie, I couldn't help but speak up. You alright? You seem a bit, I don't know, off, man. It's nothing, just... They certainly seemed happy, didn't they? He looked at me with a sol somber, solemn eyes, making my words sick in my throat. I took a short breath and smiled as best as I could. Yeah, they did. And I know I am too. Thanks. It wasn't something I would have seen myself, and I'm glad we did. Guess I just haven't been feeling very romantic lately. I'll try to fill in for you then. I really should get going. I have a few errands to run before work. I slid my hand into his for a moment and squeezed it softly. You had a good time though, right? I did. It was fun, getting a chance to spend some time with an outsider at the bar with someone. Guess I was feeling a little more jaded than I thought. We stood for a long awkward moment, none of us seeming to walk the walk away. As I looked up into those bright orange eyes, I knew I had to do something. Emboldened, I stepped closer to him and placed a hand on his shoulder. He shifted uncomfortably for a moment, his hue shifting redder. As I leaned down and pressed my lips gently to his cheek, I felt him shiver a little against me as his eyes lid closed. We stayed there for just a moment before he slowly drew back and glanced away. We... we should do this again sometime. Definitely. He stammered for a moment before smiling up at me. I'm off in a couple days. How about we get back together for some dinner? I'd love to! I can pick you up at your place, say around 8-ish. There's a great place near my house I've been wanting to go to. Near your place, huh? You sure you don't have some ulterior motives? Not at all. Not in the least. I can do another muffin swear if you need me to. No need. I'm pretty sure I can trust you. Why don't I meet you there at 8? No point in having you head all the way to my place if it's near yours. We said our goodbyes and parted ways. For me at least, I felt quite a bit better about the situation. Even if I was a little rusty at all this, I still get good enough to keep him interested. Back in the car, I went over the date in my mind, smiling as I relived the good bits. I knew I'd be coming home to Kobe in a million questions, but I still enjoy the memory of my first date in a long time. Congratulations, you've unlocked the Testing the Waters achievement. Alright, so I learned a very valuable lesson about this. I'm going to quickly save. Alright, because I really wasn't expecting that. Like, and I'm sorry for my adverse reaction earlier, but that really threw me off because I do remember saving. Unless, you know, Steam doesn't know how to do all this stuff. Who knows? Maybe Steam fucked up this time around. Alright, so uh, you saw ba pretty much what I did with Jax. Um, we did an alternative run from last time. So, um, yeah. We're going to call Sky now. Okay, I'm pretty much going to skip all this. So... see what happens if I pick a place. Well, we could go have lunch somewhere. Go see a movie. How does that sound? I was going to go out tomorrow to buy some materials for a costume I'm making. If you want, you can come with me. Oh, that is such a ripoff. Why give you the option if it's not going to let you do anything with it? Alright. Well, they keep calling me Cruz the Panda, even though I'm frickin' too Joe. Man, you know what would be a dick move? Is if I, like, called somebody else, blew the date off, and just ran somewhere else. Man, that'd be terrible. Okay, let's just stop. Oh, okay. Hey, Sky, you made it. Love it. Hey, baby girl.
I have to say, <clears throat> everybody here looks so uncharacteristically, like, attractive. And it's not like real life at all, obviously. But, I know, it's supposed to be a fantasy thing. See, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I kinda wanna try dating this chick, although I know she's kind of, I don't know, bitchy. Let's be honest. Wow! So that'd be a dick thing to say. Not at all, honey. I bet you five bucks. Like, if you said no, like you were not interested in that, you know, she would just be like, oh, we're done? We're done? Get out of here. I bet you that's what would have happened. But. Anyway. Uh, so, I pretty much blew through those two, like, playthroughs. Well, the intros, anyway. So, we're definitely gonna save, like, right here. Because I am tired of that happening. We're basically... I was... I seriously wasn't expecting that. I was not expecting that. Alright, so I'm gonna continue with what I promised to do. And that is continue a playthrough with Sky. I should check the details of the comment with Sky. It'd suck to spend all day looking for her. Ring, ring, ring. Ring, ring, ring. Hey, Tujo. Had a great time the other day at the mall. Are you still good for the con? Aw, oh, man. That would be a dick move. I just wanted to check in with you about it. Awesome. Well, I'll forward you the website so you can see the details. One sec. Anything else you wanted to know? Sure. That'll be perfect. Oh, yeah, we really should work out where we should meet, and when. <laughs> oh, yeah, shoot, good point. I got so distracted thinking about what we could do there. Why don't you meet me at the main concourse near the sign-in desk around, say, 1 p.m.? I gotta sign in for a couple of events in the morning, and the lines are usually pretty bad. Oh, hey, I'd love to introduce you to my friends, too. That sounds good. Okay, keep an eye out for me. Would love to meet your friends and explore the con, too. Okay, being responsible aside, I should run. I need to make sure I have everything ready. I'll see you there, Tujo. Thanks, hon. Of course. See you there. Bleep. Bling. That must be Sky's email. My Seriously? Okay, okay, I can kind of understand it not being that crowded, but I have been to conventions multiple times, and they are usually jam-fucking-packed, okay? And this... Costume con. This, this font does not look very, um... It looks superimposed. This looks sort of like it fits, but this... It looks like it was just slapped on. And... Come on, Jason effects. I would imagine you put some random NPCs walking around out there. Well, not walking around, but, like, at least hanging around. I wasn't really sure what to expect when I pulled up, but the large convention center parking lot was packed with people that I do not see in front of me. Half of them seemed to be in costume. I wasn't exactly sure who some of them were, but a lot of them seemed to be based on classic video game characters. Residents of Evil Soldiers and Team Rocket costumes, I know. At least in passing, which I do not see in front of me. The convention center itself was enormous. I mostly just followed the crowd to find my way over to the day pass line. I started to wonder if I'd even have any luck finding Sky amongst all these people. The convention floor was busy. I thought Sky had said this was going to be a small meetup, but the number of people was close to claustrophobic, which I don't see. Oh, wait, I know what it is. They're all imaginary. You just gotta have to pretend they're there. The environment was a better plan than I'd hoped. Everyone was smiling, roaming together in groups of laughing friends between the panels and game rooms. You know, if you squint just right, you can't see a damn person because there's nobody here. It's a reflection of my dark torch. Holy shit! <clears throat> hey, bud! Do you need a hand with anything? I noticed you've been pacing around the room on your own for a while. Yeah, it's almost like I'm the only one here other than you, creepy guy. One of the cosplayers peeled off from his group of friends and playfully hopped his way over to me. Oh, I'm okay, thanks. I'm waiting for a friend. I've been having trouble finding her. I know she's in costume somewhere. What's her name? There ain't a ton of girl cosplayers here. I might know her. Sky. She said she'd be waiting around here, I think. She mentioned that she's going to be cosplaying as Luca? 
Bones guy? Oh yeah, she's right over there. Good thing I came over. You may have been staying here for a while. Hey, Sky, your friend is here. At least the guy was helpful. I could see why what Sky meant about her friends being nice and less critical about other than the people at Amorous. I probably have felt a little weird about going stranger in that outfit, but the cosplayers here all seem very outgoing. They approached and posed with pretty much anybody walking by. The nerd community really was pretty open, so I guess I shouldn't have been that surprised, even if I hadn't been to this particular con. It was pretty cool to catch quite a few cosplayers in some of the games and animes I knew. I definitely had to have to take a few photos myself. Oh, Chris. I'm sorry, you weren't waiting here for very long, were you? I was sworn by some old friends I hadn't seen in ages. I see you've already met Lexi. Did you, huh? Hey, I forgot to ask, are you in costume too? I'm in my costume right now! There's this kind of old school game called Evil Z Stone. There's a couple of characters in there that are pretty understated, but I'm going as one of those. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that one, but hey, way to pull off the look. Slightly easier costume, I guess. <laughs> hey, go easy on 2J, Lex. It was the last bit of thing I suggested. A new local friend I figured I'd drive here. Still, I'm really glad you made it. To be honest, I almost didn't recognize you, Sky. I guess you didn't warn me not to rely on fur color. Sky always takes your cosplays to the next level. She won 5th place last year with her Mio 2 costume. She even shaved her fur completely smooth and painted her bare skin to get the right look. That's not something I needed here. The thought of Sky oiling up her smooth painted body made me glad I wasn't wearing any tight showy clothes when I myself today. I bet she barely wore any clothing over that outfit either. Though that actually seemed pretty typical here, and not limited to the girls either. Thanks Lexi. Though. You should have seen the concept that won, TJ. I wish I had that kind of talent. You know, the character that I'm cosplaying as today. Right, TJ? I know who that is. You're not the only one Pocket Fonsters fan around here. Anyway, you told me about the game store, remember? I really like how you did the predominantly male character and gave them a sexy female spin. Sexy? <laughs> I wasn't even trying for sexy. I ended up going with the clothes you and me picked out at the store since they show off the markings better. That and the colors actually worked. I hoped I wasn't out of line with the sexy comment. Sky wasn't the only one to dress provocatively for her costume. Lexi was showing more skin than what would have been suitable outside of the convention. Are all cosplayers like this? If so, perhaps I have been coming here instead of the nightclubs. Should have been coming here instead of the nightclubs. Yeah. I think you did a great job with the costume, Sky. Maybe even contender for first place this year. No offense, Sky, but first place is heading my way. Hey, you're two Joe Panda, right? Sky's been going on about you all morning. More of Sky's circle of friends began to crowd around me. I wasn't aware why she was so popular when I came to this kind of stuff. Aw, oh, Hain, come on. You know I really don't care that much about the competition. I wouldn't be surprised if you won. It's fun for me to just show up. I'm just messing with you guys. I bet 10 bucks here Tucho knows my character. They aren't going to be asking me this all day, are they? Heh, <laughs> you're probably smothering the two of them. Hey, Sky, why don't you show Tucho here around the convention? That's a great idea. We'll catch the rest of you guys later. Come on, Tucho. Let's go. Sky slipped her hand in mine, guiding me around the bend of the corridor and away from some of the crowds. Sorry about that. My friends are really nice when you get to know them. I think Lex could tell things were getting a little out of hand. Hey. Hey, that's not a big deal. I'm just glad your friends seem so nice. I guess talking about their costumes is only natural when you're dressed up for the con. Still, I don't know if it make you feel like you're a third wheel to my friends. Let's go spend an hour together, just you and me. I will have to work, head back over to the, them after that, though. There's events held there throughout the day, and I really want to be there for the photo. Guests aren't allowed for that. Hey, that's fine. I really didn't expect you to drop everything and hang out. It is a convention, after all. Really? Well, thank you, TJ. That means a lot. So what do you think about the convention, anyway? Are you liking it? 
Hey, I'm having fun. It's exciting. I've been enjoying the spectacle of everyone getting into the characters. Even if there's just a, you know, in your face at times. I wasn't really expecting it to be so busy, but now I managed to find you, it's not so bad. I'm glad you're having a good time. I was really hoping you'd have fun here, so we can just enjoy it together. Hey, there's a whole room of people selling awesome anime, video games, and the comic book stuff. Wanna go check it out? Sure, that sounds pretty cool. You have to give me a few recommendations. This guy took me over to the line, people waiting to enter a large pair of doors. She skipped right through the front of the line, seemingly knowing one of the security guys by the name and showing a special colored badge. Did you do that guy a favor or something? How did we get in so easy? I'm a super sponsor for the convention. I pay a little extra to help fund the con staff and get some cool perks like free lunch and blind cuts. I just went with a regular guest pass to be honest. I probably should have read the ticket options more clearly. There's nothing wrong with that, especially if you're just here for the afternoon. I just like to support all these things because they mean a lot to me. Conventions are the one place where I feel comfortable enough to be myself during this moment. I hope you feel comfortable around me too, Sky. I know we're into similar stuff, but you know you can be yourself, right? I'm here to hang out with you after all. To be honest, I really do. Most of my friends only know, really know me from the cosplay stuff, so it's nice to meet someone from the outside of the fandom who's really open to that stuff. Honestly, you're my first real, um, date who has immediately started with some weird fanboy stuff. That club stuff wasn't really my comfort zone. You, yet despite all the girls you could have spent your time with, you sat down with me. You really cheered me up that night. You also stuck up for me in front of those two girls. I mean, I know you wouldn't exactly join in the pick of me, but I feel safe to be my son around you. Wow. I wasn't really expecting her to pour her heart out like that in the middle of the line of people, too. Spending time with her must really mean a lot, even though she's got a lot of friends here that she could have spent time with. I'll be honest, Sky. The last few days that we've been hanging out together have been really special to me. I love spending time with you, Sky. That's kind of weird how they mentioned her name twice in a row. More than just as a friend. I let my fingers play over the palm, and she returned the gesture with a playful skis of my thumb. She seemed to come to her senses after a moment, shaking her blush free as she looked down the line as the doors opened to the sales room. You're great, Tijo. I hope you know I feel the same. How about we head to the dealer's area? We're probably holding up the line here, getting all deep and meaningful. And in the room, my senses were overloaded with dazzling lights, sounds, and costumes at every turn. The main room here was just a bit that it was... It would take us a long time just to walk around all the attractions. Some pretty big names were hosting booths in that weekend. Voice actors from animes and artists from famous comic book series. There were video game companies showing off their new releases and even some old companies re-releasing their retro games. I expected this amount of star power right in front of the, on the door. I gotta say, Sky. Coming to the convention was really worthwhile. I'm probably gonna bust out my wallet and pick up a few comics before we go. Sky? Hey, sorry, I'm a really big fan of this artist and she has really nice sign on my hoodie I bought last year. Isn't that awesome? Oh my god, I'm so glad she signed it. Sky did a cute almost dance in front of the booth, spinning in place with honest, energetic joy. It was so cute, I couldn't help but laugh. Putting two and two together, even if Sky's hoodie was a simple themed hoodie based on a Super Sentai anime, getting the signature of the voice actor where it would probably make it worth a pretty penny. The anime is pretty popular too. No way, that's a pretty awesome score. I didn't know that there was a Kensai stand here. No way, you got an autographed Kensai jacket? That's gotta be worth a fortune now. Oh hey, Hane. yeah, she said she would. She could tell I was a super fan and totally offered to sign it. I'm totally going to use this jacket with my next cosplay. We got a little more time browsing the booths before more of Sky's photo group friends came to flood over the dealer's area and found us. The group were a big magnet for photos, especially when they came ran into fans, the characters they were, or another character from the same show. Hey, did you guys want to check out the cosplay panel? They're going to be covering some airbrushing techniques I want to check out. Hey, count me in! I was just gonna go get you guys for it! I 
actually, I was gonna steal two shovel away from Ben, but I'll catch up with you guys afterwards. Haha, <laughs> well, you have fun, you two. Make sure Sky gets the cosplay photo shoot, though. We'll try and get, keep out of trouble. Sky led me by the hand, away from the dealer's room. I did have plans to maybe go back to the dealer's room while she was getting ready for the parade, but that would have to wait. If we're gonna go back to the maze of tables again, we're gonna burn, we burn all our time together. She navigated the crowds pretty quickly, so I didn't have to check in the map and the conventions info pack. But Sky seemed to know exactly where to go. As we got close to the room, the sound of cheers and bleeping memes met me before we even reached the door. Inside the large room, the con had made, set up a makeshift arcade with large TVs around hooked up consoles. They even bought some of those, brought some of those large arcade machines, a lot with cool looking retro games. What's your thing? An arcade is way more my style. I guess this is more of the style than the sales floor. A few dozen people were standing around two large screens. They seemed to be in the middle of a brawn tournament. A couple of the people watching this guy's costume gave a cheer. She cheered them on in return, gave them a few cutely ineffective shadow boxing moves. <laughs> So, are we here gonna do but some boxing? Or do you wanna, you know, go head to head and brawn? I don't know how I feel about beating up a game, Luca, with you dressed like that. Actually, I have another idea. Come on. This guy slipped a, her hoodie off, sidestepping some of the console games over to the large retro games. She stood around a dance game called Dance Revolution Revolutions. Wait, what? You said you could dance, right? We were at the game store? Hell yeah! I've got all those games! Well, actually, you know I was just saying that to impress you, right? You ain't getting out of that easy. Don't worry, we'll go two player. It'll be fun. As the game started up, the beat began to slow as we stepped up side by side up the two player game. The sky shook her arms and legs out, warming up. A couple of others started to gather up and watch the pretty fox girl in the shorts probably having more than a little to do with it. Phew, here goes nothing. The arrow started out pretty slow as the beat started up and then down and then up again and then right and left and up, down, up, again, side to side, swing it around. If it kept up like this, I could probably keep the pace. And then, phew, right, left, right. Damn, I messed up somewhere. There goes my perfect streak. Are you serious? I don't remember this. Down, then up. Up, then down. Or then right, then left. Okay, okay, let's do this one. Let's do this one. This is gonna, this is gonna work for sure. That failure buzzer is so loud. Darn it, I'm starting to fall behind. Okay, okay. Clearly, up, then down. It's getting a little tough. Damn, I can't let Sky down. Felt like I was doing pretty good so far. Sky was really taking it in stride, though. She was laughing and hopping from one foot to the other, shifting her weight. I didn't even have time to laugh along with her before the arrows started to come down a little faster. The beat of the song really kicking in. First, it started like last time, with up, down, and up swinging around, but at this time it was just like left and right and then damn, I can't even keep up. It was starting to get faster, but I think I was starting to get the rhythm. Same pattern one more time after that. Okay, I think I got this. How's it going? I think I got it. Get ready. There's side split coming. How many times have you played this? Up, down, up, right, left, right. Okay, it's one of these. Let's pick this one. This is gonna work. I know it. Damn, the alarms are going off. I gotta concentrate. I'm so close to failing out. Hey, you're doing pretty awesome with that. <laughs> hey, speak for yourself. You're doing great. Front splits. With a loud explosion sound, the screen suddenly went black. All the graphics fell away. Oh, man. My face felt about as red as the flashing failure text and even Sky was blushing with heart and embarrassment. The crowd around us mumbled a few words of apology. No one laughed at us, but the booing sound coming out of the machine was enough for the two of us to shuffle off defeated. Yeah, whatever. 
This guy slipped out of the game room, leaving me to follow. Jeez, I guess I really messed up. Hey, Sky, I'm really sorry about that. I feel pretty dumb. I'm sorry. I kind of stuck, stuck at those memory and rhythm type games. Eh, that's okay, hon. You can expect to be a pro, I guess. I didn't mean to put you on the spot or anything. Still, you're really good at that, Sky. I'm impressed. <laughs> Thanks, teacher. I had a chance to practice. I had so much fun, too, Joe. I'm super glad we had the time to hang out. I know it's not really exactly a date or anything, but there's a ton of things going on. Like, a crazy amount of people. Still, I'm really glad we had a chance to hang out. It's made the con go a lot cooler than last year. Even cooler than getting your jacket signed? Would I geek out over more? Maybe. I mean, I am first edition after all. We should get you signed then. <laughs> Got anywhere in mind? Now I do. But to answer your sneaky question, yes, of course, I'm happier that you're here. Your ego feeling okay now? I'll let you know if it's feeling a little bruised again. Miss Awesome DDR Pro Dancer. Honestly, I was kind of getting worried. This place is getting even busier than the mall. And the game room was more crowded than crazy than the freaking dance floor at Amorous. Yeah. I guess it, it's different, though. I didn't really know anyone at the mall. I don't know, it's just different, right? Someone could be in the mall because they need a new, I don't know, a new suit for work or something. Or they're just pissed and trying to quickly get lunch before going back to work. Everyone is trying to have fun. They're here because they like games and anime and stuff. That makes sense. Though, I guess most people amorous are here because they want to have fun too. I guess, yeah. But they're looking for weird sex and drinking fun. I've never really, well... Sky hugged her balled up jacket to her chest, still held loosely in her hands before after dancing up a storm. You've never drank? <laughs> no, I drink. I'm a lightweight though. And not in the fun, dancing kind of way. I just feel dizzy and sick. Good cover, though. For the other thing. I heard it. Sky, you know I'd never do something you didn't feel ready for. If you didn't want to... No. I mean, I'd want to, you know. I'm not like a nun or anything. Sheesh. She snickered a little, trying to hide her blush behind her jacket a little. The spoken admission seemed accidental, but I couldn't help but feel part of her hot flush creeping over me, too. Not a nun. So she had some kind of experience. Just not with someone else? Ha! Huh. Well, good. Jeez, I guess that's not the right way to say it. I mean, I'm glad it's not something you're worried about. Sky bit her lip and chuckled her under her breath under her hoodie. Anyway, I don't know. At least at Amorous, there's a bunch of people all trying to and failing to dance. It's a little scarier to be suddenly up on stage and everyone just watching. Fun, but kind of surprising. You don't seem to like the crowds, usually. I guess I didn't really think about it. Anyway, I'm sure most of the people there were just waiting for their turn on the machine. Hmm. I don't know. It was pretty brave to get up in front of all those people like that. Psh. I really don't think they were watching us. You really think the cute girl in the cami shorts dancing around had nothing to do with it? It's kind of showy. But it's a showy place. It's not the fruit markets, anyway. The carriage just doesn't even wear clothes. It's a game for kids. And a character with a bunch of body pillows. You know that you look extremely good in that outfit, right? What? She immediately flushed and almost took a step back. I mean, you look really cute, you Sky. Shaking your hips and on the dancing game, especially on the top. I'm not trying to weird you out or anything, I'm just saying. What? What did I do now? Nothing. You're just really cute when you're being so innocent. Sky, it's totally the opposite. I'm not trying to call you out. I'm saying you look really sexy. And there's a lot of people here who'd admire that even on a normal day. It's not like that changes when you're dancing around the lower cut top. Sky huffed and crossed her arms over her chest as though the concept of her own bust was alien to her. It made her seem very young somehow. Jeez, now you have me all self-conscious. 
She quickly slipped her arms into her hoodie, though. She at least stepped back beside me and seemed cool in head. Sorry for being freaked about tonight. What? Come on, Sky. it's fine. I like how you've got this secret kind of confidence to wear stuff like that and not worry about other people thinking about it. Because you kind of sound like you were kind of naive. Naive in a good way. Like, unashamed? Even if you're shy, you look good enough to draw a crowd and you weren't even trying. Maybe. Maybe I don't want to draw a crowd. I just want to be... I just want to be a girl with nice girls. You're clearly not flaunting it in purpose, though. It's just natural to you. She sighed again, snickered under her breath, and stepped back in the, beside me apologetically as we watched a few of the groups walking in by in quiet contemplation for a moment. Jeez, I'm really bad at taking a compliment, huh? A little. But I do mean it. You look great. Great enough that people check me out all the time? Really? Really. I noticed it in the gaming store when you were browsing. Those girls from my high school weren't exactly calling you ugly. Now you're gonna make me feel really paranoid. She sighed with a nervous laugh. I held out my hand, and to my surprise, she took it, squeezing my fingers tight. You know that you being modest about your looks is one of the things I love about you, right? <sighs> well, I kind of love that you let me know when I'm doing something right, too. I appreciate it, even if it makes me feel kind of self-conscious. It makes me feel good, though. You make me feel good, so thank you. Sky leaned in and kissed my cheek, snickering. I love you, too, TJ. I really didn't expect you saying that, but it feels really good to say it. Love you, too, Sky. She sli- She sli- She slided in closer. She slid in closer, smiling as we took a moment. Just people watching side by side, hand in hand. Before too long, a booming announcement fought over the rabble of conversation on the overhead speakers. Oh shoot, muscle lost track of time. They're gonna get ready to get photos. Sky, there you are. Hey, Hane. Hey, Tucho. You mind if I drag Sky away a little? You're not allowed in the photo room unless you're in costume. Dude, I am totally in costume. I'm that guy from Anime 27. Okay, really? That's kind of lame. Yeah, those are the rules. It's dressed up only. Get the good photo of the characters and not get any real crowded in there with other fans flashing in their cameras too. It sounds like you're going to be gone for a while, right? Yeah, the photos alone could take 45 minutes. There's usually lots of people. Afterwards, there's a sort of catwalk procession thing that you can line up for. It's a pretty long parade around the convention. They can take like an hour, though. I couldn't ask you to wait for me that long. Some people hang around and take photos of us in the parade, though it gets kind of packed. I won't get you crushed for some photos, Sujo. There'll be lots of costumes, which can be fun, but it's your call. I'll take you some photos. Sure, I got my phone. I'll look around the con for some until the parade starts, then I'll snap some shots from my phone. I'll be sure to call it, show you later. Awesome. I can't wait to see you there. <laughs> I've never had anyone in the crowd take a picture from me before. Hey, before I go, there's something I want to give you. Sky handed over her new jacket. She unzipped it and gestured for me to hold on to it on my arm as she put it on me. It fit all right, though I felt a little strange wearing it after Hane had said the autograph made it really rare. That melted away when Sky wrapped me in a loving hug, kissing me on the jaw tenderly as she did. Even better on you too, Jim. Now you're sort of in costume too. I'll lend it to you, but you've got to give me a call sometime. You can bring it back to my place. Whoa! What's going on here? I'm getting some really romantic vibes. Hush, Dane. Maybe I just trust Tujo Panda with my stuff. Yeah, but the house, your house part? Bow chicka wow wow. Hey, come on, guys. We gotta get going. All right, Tujo. We really gotta get going. Thanks again for everything. And just like that, I am consigned the third wheel. Photo guy. I ended up killing time around the booths. I even did end up picking up a new game. Maybe something I could play with Sky later. I had to admit, the place wasn't exactly as fun browsing around by myself. Sky's starstruck reaction to some of the more famous artists and voice actors was really part of the fun. Though I guess if I had known some of them, 
I have had the same reaction. After an hour, I found a good strategic place to set up on a bend in the cosplay parade path where I'd get a good uninterrupted shot of cosplayers. It took a little time standing there. Some sort of, I don't know, hold up in the photo booth. But eventually, all manner of creative cosplayers started to make their way along the parade circuit. It took a while for them to get to me, but Sky was right. It's pretty cool to see some of the more famous actors I knew brought to life as cosplayers. Especially the ones who threw in the little gestures and pulled faces to act out the characters. I was sad to see that the parade was being led by the top five costumes and Lexi, Kane, and Sky weren't among them. Sky was there in the parade though, looking happy as ever. They had arranged the group into game genres and she was back with some of the brawn characters, throwing fake attacks at the audience and pretending to beat it off with the other cast members. As she passed, she drew me a playful kiss and a wink before sauntering off. Talk about a cute picture to remember her by. Even if it was getting a little late. <clears throat> by the time the parade was done, the sun was starting to set. This guy insisted that I kept her jacket safe and brought it over the next time we hung out. She shared one last hug. Hasty and interrupted, but Sky getting a call from parents to get a ride home. I promised I wouldn't keep her waiting too long for keeping the jacket getting it back to her. Did I seriously get invited to her house? That's all I could focus on for the rest of the evening. I had to assume this meant a little more than just how she, she saw her friends. I guess there's only one way to find out. I should give her a call when I'm ready to head over. At least I, ha I had that memento of the jacket for right now. Smell a little of Sky's perfume. I was sure to fold it up safe in my drawers, just so I didn't accidentally get washed, ruin the autograph. Congratulations, you've unlocked the Someone Likes You achievement. I am so happy that I did not fuck that up because that would have been really depressing. So, all right, here's what we're gonna do now. I am gonna consult my phone. I'm gonna go look at my contacts. I am going to contemplate who to approach next for dates just as soon as I check the time on my phone. Dude, I know what I should do. I should model my phone to look like this and I should take these little avatar pictures. And I should start assigning to random people that I know. Yeah, that sounds kind of creepy. Um, alright, so in all seriousness, let's take a look here. Um, I, I have to say, Jax is one of the cool people that I like to hang out with. So, let's go for Jax. Hey Jax. Call. After we parted ways, I walked back to my place. Jax was definitely an interesting guy, but I couldn't shake the feeling that there was more going on than I was aware. I must have lost in my thoughts when I came in the door, because Cody was almost immediately pounced on me. I was wondering when you were going to get back. You took so long, I had to assume it was more than coffee. So tell me everything. For a small guy, Kobe always managed to catch me off guard. I settled him down and we sat at the table. It was just a date, okay? I admit it. It was a date. Are you happy now? Kobe beamed. He always knew when I was hiding something, even when I didn't. So Dish, tell me, what did you two lovebirds do? We're not in love. I could feel my face heating up as Kobe continued to grin like a Cheshire cat. I better tell him something, or he'll never leave me alone. Uh, we shared a muffin. We shared a muffin and had some coffee. It wasn't particularly thrilling or romantic. You wouldn't be blushing like that if it was just a muffin. I'm not going to tell you... I'm not going to let you live vicariously through me, Kobe. Besides, don't you get enough dates yourself? But it's you! I haven't seen you out go out and have fun in, like, forever! I want to hear about it because I'm your bro. I like knowing you're happy. He gave me the puppy dog eyes and I just kind of melted. Kobe was always there for me. When I wanted to hang out, I just needed to talk. It wasn't fair to hold back. All right, all right. We had coffee, we went to a movie, and we kissed. Nothing with tongue or anything, just a peck. So what's he like? I know lots of people at the bar really like him. He's always so enthusiastic and flirty, and so cute. I'd be jealous. He was different at the start, much quieter and more reserved. I wonder if I did something wrong at first. Nah, he's probably just like you and doesn't get out much. I mean, he's at the bar almost every night until three. Not that I stay up that late, of course. 
Of course. I was hoping it was just first aid jitters. I know I was feeling a little anxious. Still do, even afterwards. It was like I met a different person. Well, that just means you need to see him again so you can get to know him a little better. You are going to see him again, right? Hmm. Yeah, we talked for a while after the date, and I suggested dinner over at a place around the corner. I've been wanting to try it for a while now. Oh, romantic! Candlelight dinner? Maybe eat some wine? He immediately broke down to giggles. I felt my cheeks flush, and I glowered at him until he stopped. Sorry, I'm just really happy for you. It's so cute, thinking about you two together. You're not helping me feel any less awkward about this, you know. Kobe immediately continued to barrage me with questions about my first date until I managed to distract him with his own romantic life. As I went on and on about his conquests, I found myself half listening. Part of me kept thinking back to Jax, the kiss at the theater, and the chat at the coffee shop before it. I might be a little rusty at the dating thing, but there's something that Jax isn't telling me. Even more revealing, I wanted to know what it was. Seeing the look on his face, watching him brighten a shade or two, I couldn't stop thinking about it at all. I hadn't felt this way about someone in a long damn time. Hello? I was paying attention. No, you weren't. You were a million miles away, like with someone else. He was right, of course. Seems like Jax made more of an impression than I thought. Still, it wasn't any good to dwell on it. I couldn't compress my entire dating life into a single day. Let's do something else, then. I need to distract myself for a while. Ooh, what if we... Fortunately, Kobe was more than willing to distract me, as were a number of chores I'd been neglecting. Between getting myself whipped up at video games, cleaning up our messes, and grabbing something for dinner, it was after 10, and I was too tired to worry. Kobe said some quick goodbyes as he ducked out of the door in his glove gear and flopped into bed. It was nearly midnight when my phone started ringing. I'd forgotten to silence it before passing out and struggled to grab it from the nightstand. Blinking myself awake, I swiped to answer and held the phone close to my ear. <sighs> Hello? I couldn't hear anything on the other end for a moment save for the roaring cloud and at least a dozen background conversations. It sounded like someone was trying to talk to me, but I could only hear snippets above the din. Finally, I heard some sounds of movement and a door opening. The background noise grew muffled, and I could finally make out a voice. Can you hear me now? Jax, why are you calling me in the middle of the night? Is something wrong? There was a pause, longer than really felt comfortable. At first, I thought the connection had dropped, but I soon heard a resigned sigh from the other end. One of the bartenders got sick and they can't work for the rest of the week. I didn't want to tell you like this, but I didn't have a chance to step away until now. I don't get a real bre meal break until later. My heart sank a little. Was this real? Was he just backing off again? I found myself getting a little angry at him, until I realized he wouldn't be calling me in the middle of the night, just to keep me up at arm's length. I'm sorry, I really am. I was really looking forward to it. It's been forever since I had a nice chance to sit down meal. I usually have to make do with whatever I can reheat in the kitchen from last night. What's on the menu tonight then? Tonight, I have a lovely box of mac and cheese, aged for three weeks on the shelf. It's got a robust neon flavor, with hints of cardboard and neat memories of being in college. We both chuckled at Jax's flavor, flowery description for a moment before settling back into an awkward silence. Maybe I was thinking out loud, but when he said, This isn't an excuse, it caught me off guard. It was my concern, but to address it so directly, I sputtered in the phone, suggesting that I hadn't even considered it. Still, he seemed to have a pretty clear read on me. I know I come off as pretty distant yesterday, but I really had fun. I wanted to see what was in store for her next date. Next date? He was actually considering that? My cheeks flushed a little as a grin spread across my lips. So, we are actually dating? It wasn't just a casual muffin? Well, yeah. I don't spit muffins with every few person who walks through the door, takes me out for coffee. I'd never keep my girlish figure if that was the case. My sense of ease was interrupted by the sounds of noise spilling into the background and someone shouting over the din. I know, I know, I'm finishing up now, I'm sorry. Too, Joe, I gotta run. Jack scrambled to end the call and left me sitting upright in bed, staring at my phone. All the anxiety I'd been having 
from before seems so silly now. He wanted to see me again. He even said he did. Who knows when we might have the chance, though. I thought I'd try to call him back. Maybe he could steal another wound or two. We could have lunch or something tomorrow. He isn't picking up. Maybe he can't hear his phone, or maybe he's really busy. I suppose I could always drop by the club. No, we're dropping. We are going to the club tonight. That is mandatory. If we couldn't find the time to do it, then I needed to make time to see him again. He mentioned a meal break and didn't sound thrilled about his meal options. Maybe I should grab something to bring. I got myself together and headed towards the door. The only question was, what do we bring? Between me and the club, there were a few choices that were open this late. Oh, I wish I kind of gave you an option. I would have brought pizza. Oh, it does give you an option! Okay. I got myself together and headed towards the door. The only option was what to bring. Between me and the club, there were a few choices that were open this late. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this. Now, let's make an educated decision here. Jack seems like a pretty classy guy for being such a famous bartender at Club Amherst. Alright, so we got Burger Wolf. We got Dragon's House of Noodles. We got Mia More. Mia More. We got Favors Curries. Wait. I think he meant Favors Cummies. Um, let's go with Burger Wolf. It wasn't much of a romantic dinner, but Burger Wolf was very, two very important things. Fast and cheap. Considering I was pressed for time, it seemed like the best option. I pulled through the drive-thru, and after a quick scan, went with two of the monster burger meals. Who doesn't like a double meat patty and fries at 1am? Besides, I mean, most normal people. I could go for a fucking burger right about now. With traffic being almost non-existent, it was pretty easy to get to the club in record time. After wrestling with the car to slip into the only space remaining, I hoofed it to the front door and made my way inside. The place was packed from wall to wall and could only hear, barely hear, over the music in the crowd. It seemed the sorority girls Jax had mentioned invite a few more friends over throughout the night. Oh man, Seth's still there. I feel so bad for him. Hey girls, it's fresh meat, and not a bad looking one at that. Woo, take off your top! I spluttered in place as the girl bounced in front of me, slashing her drink around. It was pretty clear from her expression that it wasn't her first. Dude, isn't this the same girl that, like, I don't know, verbally harassed my girlfriend back at the mall? You know what? Forget about it. Come on, cut loose. Woo, we're all here to party. You should come join us. I just know Monique would be into you. Uh, thanks. I'm sure Monique would be into a lot of people over here. I tried to bow out, shouting over the noise as she began to tug on my arm, yank me in the direction of their booth. I desperately looked around for Jax or anyone else I recognized as she pulled me into the table scattered with shot glasses. Shot, 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 shots, woo! As I was about to down one of them, one of them just get, get, let me go, one of the other bartenders from last night tagged me out of the shoulder. He gave me a wink and nudged me to the back as he laid out a whole new array of beverages for the enthusiastic crowd. They seemed to forget about me for a moment and snagged each other alcoholic fruit salads off the tray. Sorry about that. Oh my god, that is creepy. Okay, g sent effects. I really hope you're watching this right now because this is something you can fix. <clears throat> Sorry about that. They've been getting pretty rowdy. Follow me. Thanks, Rue. Two of us made our way through the club and back to the main bar. He lifted a small separator and ushered me past it through the swinging kitchen door. While it was a little bit darker back there, it was also much quieter. There now. I don't have to sit out. You're too Joe, right? Jax has been complaining about having to work tomorrow since the start of the shift. He told us he might be dropping by. Seems like he's pretty fond of you. He gave me a bit of an elbow nudge as I stammered back to him. I didn't exact expect his co-workers to be so aware of his dating life. I just tried to smile and not feel so awkward about someone knowing more about me than I did them. Yeah, well, we hit it off pretty well. Good to see him dating again. Been trying to bury himself in work for so long. Heck, it's just his luck that this one day he asked off this week is when Mitch gets sick. He led me to an empty prep table in the back of the kitchen. A couple of abused bar stools served as chairs. He motioned to one and smiled. I'll let him know you're back here. After I got settled in, he stepped back into the club. My head was spinning. In five minutes, I learned more about Jax's past than I had our whole first date. 
Still, his initial reaction to me outside the bar made a little more sense, though I still didn't know what had actually happened. I started unpacking what I brought, grabbing a foot dishes from the clean stack near the dishwasher and setting them on the table. I just poured us a glass of water, then Jax walked in. It had clearly been a long night for Jax, and his chipper attitude was waning and his stomach was audibly rumbling. It made me wonder if he'd had a chance to grab something to eat since this morning. I hate to be blunt, but I'm starving. Do you mind if we just jump in? Not at all. I nibbled at my food while Jax wolfed his down. I asked him about his day, how he was doing, and how none of us, you know, how now and the two of us exchanged pleasantries as we ate. I still couldn't put what the other bartender had said out of my head, nor the awkwardness of him knowing my name without knowing his. Jax must have sensed it as he sat down his food and sit smiled. Much better. Sorry, I, but I, if I don't get something to eat, I tend to collapse around this point. Burger Wolf? Going all the way out for a romantic dinner, huh? Hey, you didn't give me much lead time, and who doesn't enjoy a good monster burger and fries every now and again, huh? I'm just teasing. It's vastly better than Roy Hitted Mac and Cheese for the third time in a row. Thanks. Sitting across the table, my mind wandered back to what the other bartender said. It seemed pretty clear that Jax was at least interested in me, so why was he so quiet when we first met? I don't want to pry, but I just had to know. Jax, I needed to ask you something. It's been bothering me for a while now. What's that? Yesterday, you were a totally different person at the start. Quiet, reserved, unsure. Here, though, you're a showman. Your coworker mentioned that you hadn't been dating in a while. I just... What happened? It's still not important. Well, it is important, but it's not a big deal. I want to make sure I'm not getting the wrong signals here. I like you, Jax. It's a little painful still. Hard to talk about it even with my friends. I figured, but I like you. I like the you I got to know when we first met. You I was with after the movie. I don't want him to vanish on me. You're the second guy I've dated. Most of the time I've been with women. It's always been casual, and we've been friends afterwards, but the first guy I was with, I met back in college. He shifted a little in his seat, his scales fading to a duller hue. It was clear he was getting a little uncomfortable. He was a driven guy, very ambitious, he got a straight A's and all his gases, involved in nearly every activity on campus, and he wound up tutoring me in math. We got to know each other, and then one night, he leans over and kisses me full on the le lips. He blushed as he too looked down at the table. Shutting his eyes for a moment, he took a slow breath and continued. It wasn't really an aha uh -huh, gay moment. I know, I like both, but it was intoxicating. It was like being new to the whole thing again. We were tight throughout our first two years of high school. He'd always take me out to fancy places, buy me stuff. It was fun in a sort of materialistic way. We all like when someone takes care of us. I know there are days I took a look at the bills and wish I had a sugar daddy. I've been working out jobs to help pay for tuition and other costs. Mostly we jobs at restaurants, since tips could actually give me the extra cash I needed for day stuff. After a while, I found I really liked it. The showmanship, performing in front of an audience. You do look like you love it. I've never seen someone so enthusiastic about making drinks and getting to know people. He beamed at me from across the table, his hand sliding across towards me. He stopped short and looked back down his plate, his smile vanishing. He didn't, though. Said it was a waste of time. I'd never make any money off of that or go anywhere important. That's when the fight started. I broke it off and we went our separate ways. I went back to girls and he... Well, last I heard, he was off in New York somewhere with a law firm or investment bank or something like that. I don't get it. What does that have to do with dating guys? He shrugged a little, lowering his gaze to the table. He was my first, and I guess I just kind of assumed most guys were going to be like him. Working at a bar, I saw how most guys approached women and figured that, that was pretty much the norm. So I just dove into what I loved, and I get to flirt here and there, maybe have dinner with an attractive woman or guy, and not get judged for doing what I want to do with my life. I guess you're just the first guy to come along since then. So I'm kind of learning about how he used to be, isn't exactly how every guy is. Jax, I'm not going to judge you. It's part of the reason I asked you out. 
In a room full of people trying to be seen, you stood out the most me. You sweet up, are you? I'm not your ex, and I don't think there's even really a gender issue. I'm certainly not someone who wants to get into your skimpy and very flattering briefs. I call you because I wanted to get to know you, beyond your abilities to mix drinks and flirt. Believe me, I know. For one thing, he never visit me at work. For another, he never instigated anything he didn't already want to do. We sat and chatted for a little while, talking about our past and a little bit about our presence. Unfortunately, it wasn't long before the kitchen door swung open once more. Jax's co-worker shuffling in, looking quite haggard. Jax! Jax! Girls out there, sorry to pop bra. If you don't come out, they say you're the only one who knows how to slice a mango with sexy. Both of us snickered before turning back to each other. Give me a second to clean up. Some of them I'm grabbing all the melons they will ever want. The bartender nodded, smiled in relief before heading back to the main room. The two of us took the time to clean up and chat a little bit more. Once we finished with the dishes, Jax turned to me with a resigned smile. Well, it seems we're both the weights. Sorry to cut the date so short. The downside of being a working stiff these days. It's alright. I don't like the ample free time from employment. It's doing me much good. I'm glad we got some time, more time to you know, spend together. It's flattering, really, considering how in demand you seem to be. Wouldn't have it any other way. I'm a total intention whore. I couldn't help but chuckle. It was comfortable to see a confident, sharp-dressed guy who served me my first drink. He always looked at best as bluest. I expect the third date, you know. Maybe a third and a half date, considering this one wasn't really much of a fun as a first. I'll try to make it a little more interesting than the back of the kitchen at your work. Next time, I'll bring muffins and fireworks. How's that? Just note that that's setting the bar pretty high. He winked at me and took a step back as if to leave. I could feel the pull, the attraction of a moment that lingered between us. Like, there was more to say or do. Maybe it was just me wanting more time with him. Before he could walk away, I placed a hand on his shoulder. Once he turned, I leaned in close and pressed my lips firmly to his. He immediately melted in the first kiss, his eyes fluttering shut as he pressed his body close to mine. Two of us held that moment for as long as we could, tongues cushing as our hands clutched together ever tightly. Reluctantly, I pulled away and stroked his cheek softly. You can expect better than that on our next date. Well, I didn't think I could look forward to it even more than I already did. He coughed lightly and adjusted himself, his skimpy briefs sat tight. He kissed me gently on the cheek and strode back into the club. Good night, handsome. Staying there, pulse pounding, and in the darkened kitchen, I felt more comfortable and confident than I had in a while. I ducked out the bar back door to avoid the crowds and made my way back to the car. Oh, fuck. I, I, screwed, I screwed that one. It's fine. Someone likes you, achievement. Okay. Well, you know, I think this is a good place to save. Um, yeah. So, obviously, um, I'm actually going to fit that in the final video. Like, I'm going to edit this a little bit so I, you know, you're not exposed to the boring parts. Or, you know, I could just dump the whole thing on YouTube and you get the real unfiltered, unmitigated bullshit that is my commentary. Um, so yeah. I'm actually glad that we went a different direction with Jax, because I feel like that made our bond that much closer, if that makes any sense. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't expecting the romantic comedy to be a hit with him, because I thought it would just bring up too many painful memories for him. You know how it is. Anyway. Um, wait. Okay, here's one thing I don't like. I don't like how you can't go back to your room. Like, there's no indication- wait, what kind of a fucking door is that? You know what, I'm not even gonna nitpick. I, like, all this time, I never fixated on that, and it's just like, yo, there's one handle here, and it's a double door. Alright, well, in that case, I would just like to say, um, one of the reasons I haven't been playing Amorous in a long damn time is because I've been trying to make movies to VR chat. I've obviously told most of you. Um, the first movie I started work on, I had to take a bit of a hiatus because the lead actor not only lost his internet, but... It doesn't really feel like he's interested in what in like being in the movie anymore, so I'm gonna have to find a way to write him out. Also, we started a new movie, which is actually going pretty well. It's just that the more I work on it, the more I'm turning it into a TV show than I am turning it into a movie. Though, if I get enough episodes, it will be turned into a movie. So that's my plan with that. 
But yeah, as for Amorous, um, I'm definitely going to try to get back into, like, you know, my mainstream hobbies and projects. For instance, Amorous videos, Major Minor, I Promise, Echo, and uh, Great Troubles. So, that's a pretty ambitious lineup. Um, I cannot guarantee when any of this will be released, but obviously I think at least one video per week is acceptable. If not... Um, I wouldn't say compulsory, but something I should strive for, you know? So let's go back to the main menu. Let's stare to my arm as I'm laying face down in bed. I have to say, this could all be a little bit better, but it's acceptable with what it is, so I'm not complaining, you know? Um, it's just that little things, like that fucking shot back at the club when the character's supposed to be above the characters in the foreground to the background. Um, that stuff kind of bugs me, but it's whatever. Um, so, as you can see, this is version 1.03. Oh, frip. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. Wait. Let me do that again. Alright. Let's take a look. Um. Wow. Wait. Uh, 10,000 views. There's only 26 comments. Alright. Well. Um, yeah. So, I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I'm going to try to do Amorous more like, more Amherst videos. I think I'm actually improving at my voice acting somewhat. He lied for his teeth. Yeah, um, it's hard to do girls' voices because I'm not exactly equipped for that sort of thing, but, you know, I had some ideas, like a voice changer, although that would probably take, like, a long damn time to line up the, uh, the required, uh, dialogue. So, yeah. All right, I think I'm gonna quit because I am feeling really hungry right now. And I could probably go for like a midnight snack. As you can see, it's like 11.41. So a little bit before then, um, I got some stuff to work on other than, you know, recording videos. So I hope you enjoy all this. And till next time, take care, guys. Peace.